Hello, my name is Macy. I come from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in upstate New York. I'm from the Department of Cognitive Science and also the Games and Simulation Arts and Science program. I'm very honored here to present to you our newest game, CureQuest. It's a game about drug discovery. The purpose of this game is to teach both the clinical, clinical students and the general public about the process of how a new drug is uh, developed and moves through its pipeline to the market. This project is supported by NIH and is a collaboration between the games program at RPI and the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. So here are the faculties from both institutes who are involved in this project. We also have a huge population of students uh, over the years worked on this project. Um, at RPI, uh, including both grad students and undergrad students, we have roughly 40 people contributed to this project. So what is the, um, what is the drug discovery process and why it is so important? Why we choose this uh, topic to develop our game? So I took this picture from a Nature Review article written by Ellen Rose at 2008. As you can see, the drug discovery process needs to go through seven distinct stages. The overall time, um, it, it can take around 12 to 15 years. The first stage is target identification, which is uh, basically the process of identifying a, a target that, can, that, that is drugable, that can be manipulated by drug. So target is typically a cellular or a molecular structure. Once you find a potential target, you need to uh, go through target screening, target valid, uh, validation. And when the scientists believe they have found the drug to, uh, to manipulate that target, then they have to go through three stages of clinical trial to verify the effectiveness of the drug. And finally, the drug needs to be FDA approved and before it goes to the market. This process is also very expensive. It can cost you uh, 12 to 15 millions of dollars. And as you can imagine, uh, researchers from different fields are, many different fields are involved and also uh, uh, other people that represent different perspectives such as the, uh, the sci scientists of course, but there are doctors, patients, uh, the, the companies that produce the drugs. So it's a vast amount of uh, knowledge uh, and, and expertise uh, involved in the drug discovery and development process. So before we de uh, decide how to, uh, uh, how to design our game, we conducted focus group study with uh, Mount Sinai clinical students. We, in this process, we identify the type of the game that they think are most appropriate for representing this process, the type of characters, and whether it's 3D or 2D, so what they like and don't like. Uh, eventually, we decided that instead of uh, teaching all of the uh, deep knowledge in each of the specific fields, which they can learn from other places as well, um, instead of doing that, we want to develop an adventure game. So things happen in the fixtures, uh, fantasy land, but you are doing actions that, are, that mimic the drug discovery process uh, in a metaphorical way or in spirit. So this way, uh, people who don't have deep knowledge in biology and chemistry can also uh, enjoy the game and learn something and also keep the game as a more interesting uh, uh, gameplay and provide, being able to provide a more interesting gameplay uh, experience. So the overall game um, contains 12 episodes. Um, so it, as actually, as you can see from, uh, from the name of the episodes, um, target identification, finding funding, uh, and then finding from, uh, uh, pharmacological resource, and do, uh, do lead optimization, clinical trials. So they are inconsistent with the drug discovery pipeline, but you're doing actions more like a traditional RPG games. Um, so I can now actually go through all of, the, um, uh, all of the episodes, but I can give you some of the examples 
um, to reiterate our game design objective is to provide a fun gameplay experience rather than teach the specific knowledge. So you are going to come into this island. Of course, this is just a 2D illustration of the 3D game environment. You come to this island, and then you observe the locals. You may see something that is suspicious, and then you start an investigation. You go through quests for target identification and target validation, and then you need to find funding for conduct your clinical trials. It's a very similar process. I'll give you one concrete example in our game, which is episode three, target identification. Um, so we designed this uh, this activity as a maze game, a maze and, and puzzle game. So basically the player will have to navigate in the maze and look for uh, various potential targets and bring them back and discuss the targets with the scientist. Uh, we designed a, a sequence of mini games such as the RNA RAM matching game, the fishing mini game, the ball rolling mini game, to mimic or uh, to simulate the process of what scientists have to go through, right? They have to conduct various activities to find the potential target. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll show you a short video at the end of this talk that shows you some of this gameplay experience. Um, other aspects of our game design objectives, we also have a strong motivation and interest um, to allow the player to understand the roles and perspectives from, uh, from uh, researchers and general, or people involved in this process. So to do that, we designed this experience as a party-based RPG. So as the player progresses through the game, he or she meets characters representing different areas of uh, scientific fields. And those characters will join the journey with the player. We also support replay so that the player can have more opportunities to reflect on his or her experience and try different things in the, uh, in the simulated world. And finally, we want to make the player feel comfortable with his or her character. So we uh, support character customization. Uh, as you can tell, the hair, uh, the style of the hair, the color of the hair, the color of the outfit, so there are things the, the player can pick before starting the game so that they can feel comfortable that the character they use uh, are, are, are a good character to represent them in this journey. So finally, at the end of this talk, I want to provide you a sample gameplay from the target identification of, uh, episode of this game. So to give you a taste and feel of how our game feels like. Um, hopefully you, uh, you will enjoy that. Thank you.